You wanna know what scares many parents? Fevers and the potential of seizures. A conversation filled with a lot of nuance, so stay tuned for some really important information because on this video, I'm discussing febrile seizures. What are they? Can we prevent them? Will they harm your child's development? Will kids always have one if they get a fever? And so much more. If you want to stay up to date on ever evolving pediatric health news, childhood development and parenting tips, sign up for my newsletter for weekly updates. I am Dr. Mona Amin, a board certified pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand evidence-based information so you can make the best choices for your children. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Peds Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on all of the latest videos and new content I put out here. And here we go. A febrile seizure is a seizure in an infant or young child that occurs when the child has a fever or temperature above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Febrile seizures occur in two to 4% of children between the ages of six months and five years. The peak incidence of febrile seizures is around 18 months of age. Although they can be scary for parents to witness, and I have witnessed my share as a pediatrician, let's discuss more to provide some guidance. Febrile seizures are classified as either simple or complex. To be classified as a simple febrile seizure, a few criteria have to be met. There has to be a fever present when the seizure occurs, and there can be no previous history of an afebrile or fever-free seizure. There can be no sign of a central nervous system infection or a systemic metabolic abnormality that could be the cause of the seizure. An example would be bacterial meningitis as an infectious cause. Finally, the seizure must last less than 15 minutes and not reoccur within 24 hours. Simple febrile seizures don't cause long lasting effects and don't drastically increase the risk of a child developing epilepsy or a long-term seizure disorder. About one third of children who experience a simple febrile seizure will experience another episode, and that percentage is higher for children who are less than a year old when the first episode occurred. But that means a febrile seizure will be an isolated occurrence for most children. If the seizure is focal, which means symptoms are occurring on only one side of the body, lasting longer than 15 minutes, or reoccur within 24 hours, it is classified as a complex febrile seizure. Children who experience a complex febrile seizure are more likely to have seizures reoccur and are more likely to develop fever-free seizures in the future, but it's not an absolute. Febrile seizures are an age-dependent phenomenon, likely related to a vulnerability of the developing nervous system to the effects of fever in combination with an underlying genetic susceptibility. One of the greatest risk factors for febrile seizures is family history. The siblings of a child who experiences a febrile seizure have a 10 to 20% risk of having a febrile seizure as well. In order for a febrile seizure to be diagnosed as a febrile seizure, there has to be a fever. Interestingly, it's not always high fevers, ones over 102. They can also happen with fevers at 101. It's important to note that although febrile seizures occur with a fever, not all fevers will result in a seizure. So it is a misconception to say that all fevers, including high ones, are going to lead to seizure activity. Check out this YouTube video for more information on fevers, when evaluation and treatment are recommended, and misconceptions about fevers. In those predisposed to febrile seizures, it's thought that the fever initiates an inflammatory response that triggers a seizure activity. It's thought that either the rapid rise of body temperature, which is most likely, or just a high temperature in general, can release cytokines that in some children lead to febrile seizure generation. These are the inflammatory properties I was talking about. There are many different viruses or illnesses that can cause febrile seizures, but some viruses that are commonly associated with febrile seizures include influenza A, which causes the flu, and human herpes virus 6, which causes roseola. Also, some vaccinations, such as DTaP and MMR, can sometimes cause fever in the post-immunization period and have been linked to simple febrile seizures. That being said, the overall absolute risk of a febrile seizure after vaccines is still very small and is not a reason to skip immunization. These vaccines prevent serious illnesses that can also cause non-febrile seizures and other potentially life-threatening symptoms, so the benefits outweigh the risk for vaccination. If your child does have a febrile seizure with the vaccination, symptoms are short-lived. 
Most of the time, a febrile seizure occurs on the first day of illness. Sometimes a seizure may be the first sign a child is even sick. A seizure usually occurs with sudden onset. As I describe these seizures, as a disclaimer, I'm going to be showing videos of children with febrile seizures, so skip ahead if it's not something you want to see. A child will not respond to you and may have a blank stare or with twitching or rolling eyes. They may appear to stiffen or they may shake parts of their body. In this first video, you can see the blank stare with some eye twitching, stiffening of the arms, as well as small rhythmic jerks of the arms. In the second video, you can also see the arm stiff in position with a blank stare. The jerking of the body is rhythmic and cannot be suppressed by holding an extremity. Like for example, if you have a newborn with a tremor, you can hold that and it stops. Seizures will not stop with holding them. Some children drool, vomit, or urinate, although these are less common symptoms. Most seizures last less than a few minutes, but they can sometimes last longer. Most children return to their normal mental state after the seizure but some do experience a phase after where they seem confused, agitated, or tired, called a post-ictal state. Those symptoms should be self-limited and resolved within five minutes. I have seen many seizures in my career. My own son had a seizure in my arms as a newborn at a few days old. It wasn't a fever seizure, but I get it. They're scary. It truly is. So I'm giving you this advice and guidance as a mom of a child who has had seizures and as a pediatrician. First, try to stay calm. Seizures can be scary to watch, but the most important thing is making sure your child is in a safe environment and you're in a safe environment. Move them carefully to the floor or bed away from anything that could hurt them. Turn their head to the side and avoid putting anything into their mouth, including your fingers, because if they have teeth, they may bite you. This will make it easier for them to clear any drool or vomit from their mouth in a sideline position versus being on their back. Try to time how long the seizure lasts, which is helpful for us clinicians to determine the diagnosis. And let me tell you, one minute can feel like 20 minutes, so just time it. If the seizure lasts more than five minutes, call 911. If it makes you feel better, you can always call 911 when the seizure begins, especially if this is the first time to have the support. If the seizure lasts less than five minutes, but the child is also not perking up, call 911. Most seizures stop on their own, but rarely medication is required to get them to stop. So it's important to get medical help on the way. Okay, so let's say your child had a febrile seizure, but it stopped after two minutes and your child is now acting appropriately. Now what do you do? After a first febrile seizure occurs, it's important to reach out to your pediatrician or go to the emergency room. Most will want to evaluate the child, mainly to determine the cause of the fever. Likely the cause is viral because many fevers in children are caused by viruses, but a workup may be done, blood work, nasal swabs, urine studies, to confirm it's nothing bacterial that needs to be treated. Rarely, if more serious symptoms are present or the seizure is atypical, they may order further testing like a lumbar puncture, where they take fluid safely from the spine to make sure there is no infection, or refer the child to a neurologist. Most of the time though, as long as the child has recovered well, no further treatment will be needed. For subsequent simple febrile seizures, or if you're monitoring, giving fever reducing medicine like acetaminophen or ibuprofen as needed for discomfort or fever may reduce the risk of seizure. However, seizures can occur even with fever reducing medicines. So don't think you failed or did something wrong. It's okay to use these medicines, but the lack of using them didn't set off more harm than good. As the cytokines, those inflammatory markers, those can trigger a seizure and they're still present even with fever reducing medicines. Because simple febrile seizures are usually benign and self-limited, which means that they're nothing to be concerned about and they go away on its own. It's not typically recommended to give anti-seizure or anti-convulsive medicines to prevent future seizure activity. If your child experienced a prolonged or complex febrile seizure or is prone to developing recurrent febrile seizures, your clinician or neurologist may prescribe a medication to keep on hand at home to give if another seizure occurs lasting more than five minutes. Simple febrile seizures do not cause long lasting effects. They do not cause brain damage, decrease cognitive function, or cause nervous system problems. They can be very scary to witness, but rest assured simple febrile seizures carry no greater risk for neurological concerns. It is rare to experience a febrile seizure past five years of age, so most children do outgrow them by this point. 
For complex febrile seizures, researchers are exploring the biological, environmental, and genetic risk factors that might make children susceptible to febrile seizures. They are also working to pinpoint factors that can help predict which children are likely to have reoccurring or prolonged febrile seizures and looking at the impact on complex febrile seizures for future seizure risk and overall development. I hope you found this video helpful. It was so important for me to make this video because it's a common question that parents get. Has your child ever had a febrile seizure? Did it reoccur or only happen once? Comment below. I'd love to hear about your experience or if you found this video helpful and leave any questions or thoughts you have. If you found this information helpful, please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos published here on Pete's Dog Talk TV. I'll see you all here next week for another video on Pete's Dog Talk TV. Stay well.